Not only does this new water cooling block from Corsair look a little bit strange, it also has an issue with the thermal pads. Hi and welcome back to another CAD video here on this channel. Today we're going to review if everything works out the Corsair XG3 RGB universal GPU block that is not really universal but we will get back to that in a bit. First of all the plan for today's video is to compare this with a normal custom water block as what we have here on this table. It's a 7900 XTX, a card that we changed to this custom water block also from Corsair already at the beginning of this year. We already covered this in the video, but we will take this to get some baseline numbers when it comes to VRM temperature, memory temperature, GPU temperature, so we just know what would be the normal water-cooled state, and then we will try it with the XG3 RGB. Hetzner is my long-term partner, which I use to host my own website and also HWBot. With hundreds of thousands of servers in operation, Hetzner is a leading hosting provider and data center operator with their own data centers in Nuremberg and Falkenstein in Germany and also Helsinki in Finland. Besides their high-performance dedicated servers, with great support, they also offer powerful cloud servers at a great price. Their CCX line offers cloud servers with dedicated vCPU that can stand up to any project at the best price performance ratio on the market. Check out the link in the description below to find out more about Hetzner's CCX cloud servers. Because you cannot read out the VRM temperature with the normal ordinary tools of the 7900 XTX reference design, that's why I attached a temperature couple on the back of the PCB and in between the back plate, just in the center of the GPU v VRMs, it's basically sitting somewhere behind here. And I also added our uh, flow sensor which is currently reading about 156 liters per hour and that will be our comparison value for later once we change to the X XG3 simply to see if it's more restrictive or not. As usual I'm trying to find the most realistic scenario simply running some gaming load. You can see the power draw is about 350 watt and that's pretty much what you would expect from a 7900 XTX. Also, one more thing, um, it's very convenient that you can find the Aqua Computer flow sensor in Hardware Info without installing anything in addition. And you can easily read out water temperature is about 30 degrees Celsius, which is probably realistic, I would say. And also water flow is what we read out before. Now it's about 158. Now after half an hour of testing, we have a constant GPU temperature of 37 degrees Celsius. Hotspot is also pretty much consistent at 72 degrees Celsius. Water temperature increased slightly. We are now sitting at 31.1 degrees Celsius. But the most important part will be the VRM temperature. And as expected, that's pretty good. 44 degrees Celsius under full load. And I mean, that's just a result of the block covering the entire card. But before we proceed with changing the cooler, also obviously inspecting the cooler first, some quick words about the IQ-Link XD5 RGB Elite, so the new pump from Corsair. I will also never be able to remember the names because there are a few things that are cool and also bad about it. Let's maybe just start with the accessory first. So we have a good amount of different mounting types, which I think is good even for like newcomers, for yeah, water cooling enthusiasts. We have 120, 140 millimeter mounting brackets, and then you can use this to mount it on the side. We have the Corsair link cable included and all the mounting gear in here. The pump itself, I think, is pretty standard when it comes to a D5 reservoir combination, which is something good. You have a ton of connectors on the side. I would prefer if there would be one more on here because I tend to have the pumps on the side like this with orientation to the side, and sometimes you want to enter the pump like here from the back or exit from the back. So that could be better, but you can also rotate the pump on the mounting if you want to, so that should be fine. Also, the connections on top are pretty good. So you have one normal filling port and one for um, distributing the water through, like an inlet, because it has the, the tubing inside to like avoid a lot of bubbling inside the, the reservoir. So that's all good. Also, we have the link connector on the bottom, which is like the new Corsair data bus system. And we have this switch next to it, and this switch allows to set the pump to 100% pump speed, which is quite, yeah, quite nice. If you want to fill up your loop first and don't want to connect it to any software or anything, then this uh, switch is not quite handy. Now the thing is with all those link connectors, I mean the, the general idea is that you have this controller and then you can hook up a total of 14 devices, 7 in one direction and 7 in the other direction. And this works that you can daisy chain everything. So you have the fans, 
you can hook up multiple to the, to the fan itself. And then you, for example, have the pump, then you have a GPU block or a CPU block. But the thing is, the GPU block, the pump and the CPU block, they have no exit. So they're like, they're like the end of the line. Which means that if you want to use all three, like the CPU block, GPU block and the pump, then it won't work on a single controller. Unless you get, from what I've seen, the splitter cables, like a Y splitter cable, which is also not even included in the adapter cable kit where you have like three or four different cables included, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. So that's the only thing, it's not a huge problem, it's just something you have to be aware of. Because if you want to get all of this, also don't forget to get one of the splitter cables and then you should be fine from what I've seen. I never tried it myself, but it would make sense. And now, as I said, the same thing on the GPU block. We have only this input for the Corsair Link, but no output. And I mean, one of the cool things about all the Corsair blocks is the convenience. That's better than most of the other competitors because you have paste pre applied and also the pads for the memory pre applied. What you don't find is any kind of VRM cooling. Like, usually it would sit somewhere here or here, depending on your card and like model that you have. So the VRM cooling will rely on these two parts on the side because that is where this fan is supposed to push air through. If that works and how well that works is something I want to find out in today's video. But apart from that, it's an extremely light cooler, which is probably also a good aspect because it will put a lot less stress on your GPU slot. One thing that still entertains me is the RX NVIDIA GeForce 7900 XDX. But before, okay, let's Let's just talk about the marketing for a second and also the block itself, because to me, this is kind of an entrance water cooling product, even if the price does not really reflect it, but that could improve for the future. But if we talk about this block, it's definitely an entrance solution. We will figure out the temperatures later, but I mean, it's already not covering all components, so it will never be as good as this one, which is a block that I like and performs well, the XG7. Also, I mean, there are blocks that are like, cooling performance wise better than the XG7, but this was, is absolutely acceptable from my opinion. And then if you look at this block and check out the marketing, it says hybrid custom cooling for maximum performance and reduced noise. So maximum performance is something they could maybe claim on this, even if it's not the maximum possible, but it's still good, but it's not going to happen on this one. I mean, no matter how good the GPU is going to be cooled, you don't cool the VRM, so it's not gonna be better. And then it's, it's claiming reduced noise you're adding a fan to a water block and then you say it's reduced noise. Like compared to any other water block, it's definitely adding noise to the system. Even if it's just a little, it will add noise to the system. And then there is this point with near universal compatibility, which is also kind of odd. You buy this one and this is specifically for 7900 XTX or XT. How is this more compatible than any other water block? There are three versions. The other one I think is for 4070 and 4070 Ti and the other one is like for a 4080 and 3080. So they, they allow to be mounted on two cards, which is something that a lot of other blocks offer as well. I think this one too. This one also fits on the XT and XTX. So where is the universal compatibility? It's, it's a cheaper solution, cheaper way to make it. Even if it's not a lot cheaper, that, that's not universal. The cooler is prepared. I removed the foil, the protective film on the thermal pads. Now it will be mounted on the GPU. And just as a reminder, these areas right here, so the inductors plus the power stages in the back and also in the front will not be actively cooled. Whereas they were actively cooled with the full cover block before. I also left the temperature sensor glued to the same spot. So we should have perfect comparison values. Yeah, I don't know. To be honest, like that's not gonna win any kind of prizes for aesthetics. This way, like vertically, it's kind of okay. It's not perfectly beautiful, but kind of okay. But if you think about having this like horizontally mounted, yeah, not sure. Really, really not sure. Seems on the same level when it comes to restrictiveness of the block. We have about 155 liters per hour. From my opinion, Corsair definitely improved their IQ software with this light setup they have right now. I first had to restart to get the link system hub connected and then another restart and I was there with the hybrid, everything went smooth. If you click on it, you could change anything that comes to the RGB lighting on the, on the cooler itself. Also on cooling, 
Again, similar to the CPU water block, which we reviewed a few videos ago. If you want to know more details about that, you should check out one of my latest videos about the new Corsair Link CPU water block. But again, this temperature will be closer probably to the water temperature than to the GPU temperature. And the preset on the fan is a quiet curve, which I will just leave the stock as it is right now and just try what happens. The test has only been running for about two minutes right now and we can already see almost 70 degrees Celsius on the VRM. But what is probably even more problematic, not so sure, is the hotspot temperature is extremely high. That is quite odd. We just finished a half an hour of testing and I'm positively surprised because it ended at just above 70 degrees Celsius for the VRM temperature, which is less than I expected. The only thing I still find odd is the huge delta in my GPU to GPU hotspot. Uh, we have about 60 degrees there, which is much more than expected. But I mean, the condition is exactly the same. You can see water temperature is also 30.9. Previously, we had 31.1 or something. So it's pretty identical. That's surprising. It's better than I expected because I thought that with this low airflow, because it was ri running the quiet profile, we would see a higher VRM temperature, but that was better than expected. We're not getting to the conclusion yet because I want to remount the cooler with a fresh set of thermal paste. I'm not sure I touched it accidentally prior to mounting it. Not sure if that maybe caused this high hotspot temp. We'll have to figure that out. And I think just remounting will be the best option. The card was definitely sitting really firm on the cooler, which is why I assumed that there would be a good paste contact. But as you can see, after removing the card, a lot of the spots of the GPU were not covered. And I just assumed that the thermal pads were too thick, which could just be caused by the tolerance of the pads. That's something quite usual because they have usually quite a big tolerance in production. But I'm also sure that mounting pressure was not the cause of this because you can see there is a deep imprint inside the thermal pads and the screws were also tightened all the way. Of course, that is a fix I can do easily, but that's something that should not be the case for the normal customer. That would be inconvenient. And I mean, you can see it's a big impact on the temperature. Yep, that definitely fixed the problem. As you can see now, normal difference between GPU and GPU hotspot. Compared to the previously installed XG7 water block, the GPU temperature is now on exactly the same level. The hotspot temperature actually decreased, which is probably caused by the freshly applied thermal paste. So now it's finally time for the conclusion. And I'm positively surprised, but I still don't like the XG3. And the reason I will give you now. So first of all, let's start with the VRM temperature. Measured with 70 degrees Celsius is technically no problem at all. I would assume that it's in the same region as with the stock cooler. Unfortunately, I didn't take values of that. I didn't measure it with the stock cooler, but I would assume that it's somewhere maybe between 65 and like 75 degrees Celsius. If it's a custom card, I think it's easy that you will have VRM temperatures that will be lower than that. So you're upgrading to custom water cooling and you will have best case, kind of like the same VRM temperature as on air, kind of disappointing. You will have a much better GPU temperature, but is it worth it? Because this thing is still 130 euro and doesn't cover the card. To me, it feels like a 60 euro product when it comes to just the product quality and like the way it looks, the amount it covers on the card. Yeah, I don't know. It also doesn't really fit into the link environment. I like the link environment. I think it's the best system that you can get right now. Also, I mean, IQ is certainly not perfect, but I think it's better than what the rest is doing. I really like IQ right now. And if you think about the fans, for example, the fans are overpriced, but they work fine. They look good. The system of daisy chaining them, I think is really nice. And then you have this cooler. Yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't belong into the system. I would, I would like to have Corsair. I want this cooler with IQ Link, with temperature sensor built in, because it's much nicer. It, I mean, it covers the entire card, even if it's more expensive. But in the IQ Link system, everything is expensive. So I'm not going to get a cooler that looks extremely cheap. Doesn't make any kind of sense to me. 
After quickly speaking with Corsair, I want to add that they now also have an adapter which allows you to integrate XG7 coolers or also older CPU cooling blocks into the Link environment. So there will be an adapter cable that you can buy on the Corsair website that basically has this connector on one side and the IQ Link connector on the other side. Yeah, and then this point with the paste that the thermal pads were too high and the paste was not making good contact is also not ideal. I'm not sure. I would assume, as I said, that it's just tolerance of the pad and you can kind of fix it. But for the customer that might get this one that just wants to kind of dive into custom water cooling maybe the first time, yeah that's probably bad. And then the entire appearance with not covering the full card and especially like vertically, it's looking better than horizontally. Horizontally, I think it's horrendous. Yeah, just, just doesn't look nice and doesn't, from my perspective, fit into the entire IQ link system. When it comes to the being universal part, it kind of makes sense because it's universal for this specific card. Like for 7900 XTX, it's universal because the I would say most of the cards have the same layout because it's probably predetermined by AMD that the GPU and memory have to have the same kind of layout. So it probably fits on all cards, but it just fits on the 7900 XT or XTX, this version. It's not gonna fit on a 3060. So yeah, it's, it's not universal. That's all I have to say about um, this cooler. I like the pump, I like the fans. Um, yeah, I like the block with LCD, but I definitely dislike this one. Not a fan. Thanks for tuning in, till next time, bye bye.